Uh, right, so like Stephen just said, my name is Andrea Thomer. I'm an RA at uh, the Center for Informatics Research and Science and Scholarship, also known as SIRS, uh, which is up on the third floor of this building. And as Stephen also said, I'm going to be talking about this recently funded project that we're working on up at SIRS, called, uh, which is focusing on site-based data curation at Yellowstone National Park. That's technically also what it's called, but we'll call it SBDC uh, for this talk so that I can uh, <laughs> stop saying 25 words every sentence. Um, so this project is funded by an IMLS National Leadership Grant, and it's a collaboration between SIRS and a number of other institutions. Uh, Carol Palmer is the PI of the grant, um, but we're also working closely with Bruce Falk at the Institute for Genomic Biology, uh, which is here at University of Illinois. Uh, Bruce Falk is not just a geologist, not just a biologist, but he's a geobiologist, uh, which will become important later. Um, we're continuing a collaboration with Saeed Chaudhary and Tim DeLaro uh, with the Data Conservancy at Johns Hopkins University. And of course, because this is a project that takes place at Yellowstone National Park, we're working as closely as we can with researchers, park rangers, librarians, and archivists there at the park. Uh, so hopefully, uh, you guys are at least a little bit familiar with Yellowstone National Park. Uh, for those of you who are not, it's America's first and probably most famous national park um, and in Montana, Idaho, and a little bit of Wyoming, I think. Um, and it's probably most well known for the huge system of geysers and hot springs that are found throughout the park, uh, which are fueled by a giant supervolcano uh, lurking underneath the surface. Um, it's also one of the most popular of the parks, not just with park visitors, but also with scientific researchers. Um, and so for this project, we're going to be focusing on the park's use as a living laboratory for scientists, specifically for geobiologists like Bruce Folk. Um, okay. Oh, this animates. That's surprising. Uh, <laughs> uh, in this two-year project, we're building on our existing base of data curation, research, and education um, that we've uh, been developing at SIRS. Um, so the first project that we did related to data curation research was the Curation Profiles Project. That was a collaboration with Purdue. Um, the second project that we're building on is the Data Conservancy Grant, which just finished. Um, and we're also hoping to build on some of our grants that have been looking into data curation education programs in both the sciences and the humanities. And uh, there's also a PhD program going on right now, data curation education in research centers. Um, we do hope to eventually uh, integrate some of our findings from this project into the coursework for data curation master specialization here at GISLIS. Uh, so what is site-based data curation? Um, uh, as those of you who have taken data curation classes here at Illinois may remember, we define data curation as the active and ongoing management of data through its life cycle. Um, research and data curation has typically had an academic focus, uh, looking at the policies and processes that can help institutional repositories, university archives, and other similar memory institutions preserve and manage data. Um, however, less research has been done in library and information science on the data curation needs of scientifically significant sites, particularly those that are not attached to or managed by an academic institution. Uh, so the work that does exist has largely been done by the resource managers at these sites, and it's primarily focused on the care of physical resources. Um, so these physical resources can be as big as acres of land managed by federal agencies like the Bureau of Land Management or the National Park Service, or they can be as small as microbial samples collected on that land. Um, now, of course, there are increasingly huge amounts of digital data associated with all of these physical resources, but little work has been done exploring the curation needs of uh, that site-specific data. Um, so in this project, we're really hoping to bridge that gap between data curation research and resource management as it is being practiced. Um, and to do this, we're developing uh, a framework of policies and processes for the curation of research data generated at those scientifically significant sites such as Yellowstone National Park. Um, one of the reasons that we're starting with the National Park is because uh, they're particularly well suited um, for the development of a framework, this framework, because they already have some, although not all, of the key infrastructure in place. So, for instance, park rangers already collect um, uh, information resources and maintain those for the long-term care of the park. Um, and a lot of the parks already have their own network of par park-specific uh, memory institutions, like archives and libraries and museums. However, again, those are not attached to any sort of academic institution. Um, so why are we focusing on systems geobiology? Um, 
just as we're treating Yellowstone National Park as our exemplar case of a scientifically significant site, uh, we're also fo focusing on systems geobiology as an exemplar case of an interdisciplinary science with complex data curation needs. Um, so how many people have heard of ge geobiology prior to today? So like, all right, about a quarter. Um, so uh, geobiology uh, is the study of interactions between microbial organisms and their surrounding environment, particularly the sediments that are in the ground that create sedimentary rocks like travertines and limestones. Um, Yellowstone National Park is particularly important to geobiology because it's one of the few places on Earth where geobiologists can find this huge uh, range of uh, thermophilic or heat-loving bacteria, um, which are these really colorful community organisms that uh, live within the hot geysers and the hot springs. Um, they're what make the geysers and hot springs so beautiful, actually. Um, so research on these microorganisms uh, not only has uh, the ability to inform our understanding of the origins of life on this planet, there's a lot of people that, that think that that's how life first evolved in the, uh, on this planet, but it can also have huge industrial application as well. So I'm not going to go into this because uh, I don't know that much about it, and this is frankly taken from Wikipedia, but, um, <laughs> uh, but it's important. Uh, so. Uh, TAC polymerase, uh, one of the enzymes crucial to the development of rapid DNA, DNA sequencing techniques, uh, was derived from a bacterium discovered at Yellowstone National Park in one of the hot springs there. And not only has this revolutionized uh, molecular biology and medicine, but it's also made its patent holders millions of dollars. So one of the reasons that the Park Service is interested in better curating their data is that uh, they need to look out for bioprospecting. It's not that they necessarily want to prevent it, but they need to know what's going on in federal lands, publicly owned lands. Um, so back to geobiology. We have previous experience studying geobiologists and their data from the Curation Profiles Project. Uh, we know that geobiology is a multi-scale science that requires use of uh, many different kinds of data, chemical, physical, and biological data. And it relies on both field work and laboratory work, which isn't necessarily the case for all scientific disciplines. Uh, so this, of course, introduces challenges for the curation of geobiology data, um, especially in terms of what descriptions and organizing principles um, will be needed to support integration of that data across all of these institutions that I've been mentioning and across uh, this huge range of scientific studies. Uh, so for this project, and in order to address these challenges, uh, we've organized into three teams. Uh, the curation team will be exploring what units and parameters and groupings are useful to scientists and resource managers when organizing geobiology data. The repository team will develop and test workflows for ingesting data sets into repositories, fittingly enough. And uh, the policy team will develop and align curation policies and processes that work across different sites and different organizational arrangements. Um, so in this, we're in the first year of this project, really just the first six months, um, and we've been primarily focused on preparing for a stakeholders workshop, which will be held at Yellowstone next month, right in time for finals. And <laughs> uh, workshop attendees are going to include 10 geobiologists, uh, about five representatives from different branches of Yellowstone National Park, and project staff from Illinois and JHU. Um, the workshop will involve structured discussions, other breakout groups, and the goal is to assess curation needs uh, to start laying a groundwork for the development of other uh, curation policies. Uh, we have a poster about this at the next uh, session, so please come talk to us more or talk to me or Karen Wickett or Karen Baker or anybody else who's been on this slide. And thank you very much. Thank you.